Algebra 1, I posted a video by the Organic Chemistry Tutor. He's um, shared videos for us in the past. does a really nice job of taking us through some of these Algebra 1 concepts, including Lesson 114, graphing a square root function. Um, he does everything just by looking at the graph and understanding how it's all a transformation from the parent function y is square root of x. So anything I do to that, whether it's you know subtracting inside or adding inside the radical, subtracting or adding outside the radical, adding coefficients or multi, uh, factors on the outside, all those things and how they reflect or move up and down side to side. He does it all just by looking at that. Um, but the court, uh, Saxon book does a nice job of starting out by reminding you that any graph can technically um, be graphed and probably more accurately than this because, um, well, maybe not. He does a pretty good job of keeping an accurate understanding the way it relates to the parent function. But if you need to graph like you will for lesson practice A, it says use a table. Right, anything that's challenging, you can always use a table for. Go all the way back to basics. If I have a square root function, like y is two square root of x plus one, okay, the way I would maybe go about this is, well, what if x is something as simple as zero? This is square root of zero. You can do that, but it just comes out to zero. So times two is zero, plus one is one. How about x is one? Square root of one is one times two plus one. Y is three. And then just pick perfect squares for your X so that when you have four, you can find an even five, right? You're in control of which numbers to choose. So just choose perfect squares down the left side until you've got enough points to start to plot this. Zero, one, so that's where we're actually going to end up starting, not at 0, 0. And then 1, 3. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And you'll actually end up with more of a swooping curve that increases at a decreasing rate, as he says in the video. So that's how you'd graph using a table. Determining domain. Understand domain means anything that X can be within the problem, which basically means what's everything X can be up and down. So in this case, looks like it's going to probably be unlimited this way, but it's it can't be less than one. And that makes sense because um, in the original problem, y equals two square root of x, um, zero doesn't really give me anything. So it the domain needs to be greater than or equal to, I think we'd say one, but maybe if it's just a square root, I guess we'd say zero because, well, I'd probably say one because looking at the graph, nothing below one is going to be graphed. So, But um, they use examples like uh, the f of x or y is square root of x over three. How do I determine what the domain is of that? Well, x can just, it needs to be greater than or equal to something that will at least get me to zero, okay? So in this case, technically, anything over zero is fine because at least then we've got something zero or bigger. We have zero and then any fraction above zero. And then when you eventually get to like one, that's really nice. Um, three is even better because now we have a whole number. So the domain for that one is anything more than or equal to zero because it can't be less than zero. Why? We know we cannot find square roots of negatives. So you just have to make sure x will result in a radicand that's always at least zero. So if I have y equals x plus four, then x just needs to be anything greater than 
or equal to negative four. Because then if it was negative four, we'd end up with zero, which is fine, but anything more less than zero would not be fine. So this is your domain. That's how you find domain. He doesn't touch on that in the video, but now he'll do examples three and four. He'll talk about those. And if you read it in the book as well, you become a really good expert on that. So why don't you try A, B, C? Let's just go A through G because they're all very important, okay? So don't forget to watch that other video and let me know if you have questions.